What's good, everybody? My name is Paul the Fit. Fit. I'm hosting a new series of interviews as part of my Connections playlist. I'm calling it Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. This is a series of interviews where I'm bringing in my friends, maybe some celebs, we'll be talking about life, love, music, the struggles, the good, the bad, and the beautiful situations we have encountered as of recently. The reason I'm doing this is because this thing called life is tough. The last year has presented the world with many issues, a global pandemic, financial crisis, not knowing what's next, and feelings of hopelessness. But let me assure you, there is hope. hope. These are real life stories. They will leave you feeling inspired, encouraged, and with a renewed sense of hope. Our guardians are our angels. This is being broadcast over airwaves via video and podcast. And the frequencies are the positive vibes being sent from me to you. Welcome to Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. What's good, ladies and gents? Paul the Fifth here. Check out these awesome, inspiring paintings, right? Yeah, so I got these from my friend Susan who lives out in LA. She sent them to me here in Nashville. And it's all because we connected on social media earlier this year because she made this post. I made a comment on that. I asked her if she sends her paintings to folks. She said, I'm gonna DM you. She messaged me and we started chatting and started talking. And I found out Susan is a creative. She's full of energy and she has inspired me. These paintings reminded me of my late great grandmother, Eileen. So the combination of all this has inspired me to start this series called Angels, Airwaves, and Frequencies. Well, let me ask, what inspires you? What makes you tick? What encourages you? What motivates you? Well, for me, I have always had a passion for inspiring others, encouraging others, letting them know it's gonna be okay to go after the things that you want in your life. This series is a series of encouraging interviews with my friends, some celebs. We're talking about life and love, the difficult times and the good things that have come out of being faithful. Susan was kind enough to spend a Sunday afternoon with me to chat. If you want to know where you can purchase paintings like these from Susan, I'm gonna drop a link to her website in the description. Susan, I really appreciate you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, talking to me about your podcast, your creative side, showing me some love and encouragement. Overall, this video is celebrating her. Here it is. Well, cool. I just really wanted to, first of all, just, I mean, thank you just for taking some time out of your day to spend with me and just chat. Happy Sunday. Cheers. Yeah, sure. Got my, got my elixir of morning. Yeah, I'm on my second pot of coffee for today. Oh my God, you're yeah. a champion. Yeah, so I tried to get some sleep at five, didn't happen, got up at like 1030, because like you said, the daylight savings time thing, my body's all out of whack, so I'm I think it's bizarre that one hour messes us up so badly, but it really does. It's it's so crazy. Yeah, my schedule is so backwards from the rest of the world. I work 1.30 to 10, and then after that, I'm editing and putting footage together, and then I'm up to like 4, and then oh I'll sleep till whenever and just do it all over. When do you, when do you sleep? You got to get your sleep. It's important for the brain. I do. From 4 to about 10.30 or 11. Okay. What's your sweet spot on sleep? So I just turned 40 last December. You so, look young. Uh, thank you. It's, well, I keep it shaved because it's all gray. <laughs> Six hours to be not okay. too grumpy, but <laughs> seven is my spot to be fully functioning. Last night, somehow I got maybe five, but I'm... Yeah. I think my sweet spot is obnoxious it's like nine hours if i get nine hours of sleep i am the happiest person in the world any more than that i'm groggy any less than that i don't feel like i'm functioning fully you know nine is a lot <laughs> but it i'm is. active i mean i have an active i don't know who knows what the rules are <laughs> there are no rules we're there are no rules. Grown ups. we do what we do <laughs> but no eight don't is, tell anybody <laughs> right? eight would be preferred but 
there's just like yeah. not enough time of the day to get all the stuff done. Are you a napper? Do you nap? No. No. God, do you remember naps like when you were young, like college age? Oh, there's nothing beat yeah. a nap. Yeah, when I was in college, I'd get up at seven for an eight a.m. class, and I'd be done by one thirty. So I'd watch um, whatever that show was, the the twins, Tia and Mal. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Sister, sister. sister. Sister, sister. I'd watch that at like two or three, and I would take a nap from like three to five, and then I'd go run, and then I'd have dinner, and yeah. The good old days. <laughs> oh yeah, this adulting thing is fun and interesting, and putting all these pieces together and stuff but what'd you study in school the first time during that time frame of my life was landscape design oh cool my parents neighbor at the time was an attorney and he had me take care of his estate I was in high school so I was a party kid and all that I thought after high school I'm just gonna rent a house and like party and drink all the time well, I saw all my friends actually doing stuff with themselves and doing things with their lives. I'm like, I want to go to school, but I don't know what I want to do. So I decided two weeks before the semester started, I got into this two-year program, landscape design. That's great. So I appreciate yeah. your plants in the background there. Got my little plant corners. There's only, I think I counted when I moved, I had 47 indoor plants. Holy so. smokes. I keep some out on my porch. Last year, I called it my COVID miracle. I ate a lot of fruits. I have a really compromised immune system. I've had bronchitis a number of times. So I pretty much stayed in and I would eat a lot of lemons and limes and oranges. Well, I took some of those seeds and I grew them in some coffee grounds. And then those were my COVID miracle. They actually sprouted in the coffee grounds. So that was pretty cool. That's so cool. I follow this guy on TikTok who is a plant genius. I've gotten so many tips from him. I had this plant that I had inherited from someone. It was really on death's door. And I, I was like, I don't know anything about this kind of plant. And I didn't know what to do. And then I watched him on TikTok and he said, take a banana peel and put it in a thing of water and let it sit overnight. And then you know the potassium soaks into the water. Use that for your plants. And so I thought, well, worth a try. This plant is dying. I am not kidding overnight the next day i woke up it was insane it was like jack and the beanstalk it had all these new shoots overnight it's crazy so i can attest that the banana water works it is it's amazing how you can do things and even if you cut like off your succulent or whatever that is back there if it breaks off you can put it in water in a couple of days you've got some new roots and stuff yeah i uh interviewed for the podcast i interviewed a guy matt hunley and he is a homesteader he and his fiance they've turned their land into this renewable resource of food and, and energy it's great that would be so awesome to do i came yeah. across this guy on youtube I can't think of his name he does this thing it's called 18th century cooking and he's from i England. see that guy he yeah got, uh, john townsend i think he and has a tiktok too yeah yeah he wears like the hat and the 18th century garb and he'll live on this, like you said, homestead in this log cabin. And he shows how they do stuff from 1800. That is wild. There's another guy, a caveman guy that is, I don't know his name, but he's fun to watch. He can make anything out of it, anything around him. Like that people say, make a knife. He makes a knife, make a bowl. He makes a bowl just with using rocks and carving and doing this thing, which I still have never figured out how to do, but I know it's possible. <laughs> Anyway, it's so cool. My friend and I were talking about well, what if the world shut, well, it kind of did shut down, but like, what if we lost power and electricity? What are we going to do? And at the time, he uh, was helping me, took me in when I was getting on my feet. And he had this woods right next to his house. And there's like wildlife and there's a stream. I'm like, dude, I would go walk to Walmart, get traps. And <laughs> get, get. Well, that, that's what Matt said, the homesteader. He said, make sure that you have property that is on a water source. So he has a stream that goes through or a river bed or whatever. I have a life straw. I have one in my car. I have one uh, in case of earthquake in my room. And you can drink any kind of water through the life straw without having to treat it or whatever. I think that's just one of those things to have a live straw and one of those light things, you know, you break it open and in case your batteries run out or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if the end of days comes, we're going to have to get crafty. So we have different lakes out here in Nashville. So I would just go set up camp on a lake, get some fishing poles and go fish, like I said, create fires and just yeah. 
I took a wilderness survival class in, uh, in high school, and I still remember a lot from it. I never did get the fire thing down, but I know how to make a lean-to. I can make an igloo, which is crazy, stuff like that. I know how to collect water when there is none, putting something out to get the evaporation. These are good skills to have. They are. We never think that something can happen, but we had a tornado that came through here last year. Yeah. Thankfully, I wasn't affected. Half the city was out of power and feel like we're building. I know you guys get earthquakes out there in LA. All the time. I was in my room the other, my roommates go to bed so early, but I was in my room and around 11, 15 or something, it felt like somebody kicked the side of the house really hard. And I thought, oh, earthquake. And you just sort of look on Twitter or whatever, and you see, we get so many. I'd rather have lots of little ones though than the big one, as they say. I remember back in my landscaping days, I worked at this big landscaping place and I was inside the actual like retail building. We had one and I thought the semi had hit a power pole. The whole thing shook. I fell down <laughs> and everything because it's so powerful. It feels crazy. Yeah. It yeah, feels, yeah. Although I'm way more scared of tornadoes than I am of earthquakes because I've been in a, I've been in both now and I got to say the earthquake was way less terrifying than the tornado. I feel like the tornado is just too unpredictable. You know what I mean? Like the earthquake, you know, sh- I'm just going to ride this out if it's not a nine point something. I mean, obviously they can be super devastating, but well, just like the earthquake is still moving, but you can at least adjust maybe get hold on or something. You're not going to get sucked up out of your uh, body. <laughs> yeah. The tornado going and it was probably 15 miles from me. And when they say it makes that sound like a train. Oh it does. God. It it's... totally does. It totally does. I remember my mom told me a story about some girl she was in school with when she was little and that the girl and her mom got caught in a tornado and they got sucked up. And I, to this day, I don't know if she was full of crap or if this is a true story. She said that the little girl's fingernails and toenails got pulled off from the force of the tornado. I was like, does that happen? I don't know. She's, she's probably full of crap, but it was a good story. <laughs> Grew up in Southern Indiana and we had one oh. that came through my parents' backyard and they had a yeah. deck and a lake and it came through the lake. It came through the backyard and we had trees that were overhanging the deck. They were all twisted up and like, really? You could see where like came through the woods, it was spinning and trees were knocked down. You could see how it started on the ground, like the wind tunnel of it. And then it just twisted things around so much. It was crazy. That's so crazy. I, I think they're terrifying. I wouldn't much like a tsunami, obviously. That just devastates everything. We are now on the, the weather channel. Right. <laughs> For those of you tuning in right now, <laughs> this is a natural disaster show. <laughs> yeah, it's finally nice here. It's 71 today and I'm going to get yeah. out. Nashville spring is awesome, except for the bugs, but yeah, mostly awesome. The weather part before it gets unbearably humid. I don't know how we even got to be on the Facebook friend thing. It's probably just like a suggestion thing. It's random, like all Facebooks. When I moved here six years ago, I'm trying to connect with as many people as possible. And it was probably around that time frame. And I thought you lived here. I had no idea. I I did. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. I've only been in uh, LA for a short amount of time. And honestly, I go back and forth. So. Oh, okay. Sweet. Yeah. Nashville's home for 13 years. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Well, yeah. so you know all about it. And that's so how you know Josie, I guess, and all that. I was going to go to Anaheim for the NAM show. Mm-hmm. Like the first time I was able to afford the plane ticket out there in the hotel. And yeah. then COVID hit and then... <laughs> But at least I think we're going to have the summer name here this year. So I'm excited about that. Oh, that's cool. I've never been to it. I don't think. Nope. Never been. I went three years ago and it's pretty cool. I got to meet all kinds of cool people. And I'm that. sure it's fun. I think that stuff like that sometimes can be overwhelming for me. I take it in small doses and that's something like that. And if you're going to pay to go to something like that, you want to be all in and be in for a few hours. Yeah. I think around the first 45 minutes, I'm like, okay, that's enough stimuli for, for me. I'm out of here. <laughs> I was very fortunate at the time that I got to go. I was still a student. I went to the school called SAE Institute and they gave us free passes for the weekend. Oh, that's nice. So I got to go to that. I'm sure you probably heard of Blackbird Studio. Oh yeah. My friends worked at Yeah. I mean, I, most of my friends go to it most okay. because of the music industry. I mean, and I probably should go to it, but I just have never been, but 
I have plenty of friends that have gone and I get sponsorships from going and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I met Spectre Sound. His name is Glenn and all this stuff and all these sponsors and everything and UAD and all the audio stuff. Oh, yeah. It's a good place to geek out for someone like you, for sure. That, it that, was. Yeah. yeah. My whole idea of this little Zoom interview thing was just to get to know you a little bit and like appreciate you as a musician and artist and creative, you know, and whenever you showed your pictures and stuff, I was like, man, that is so cool. And I was just vivid and bright and just bold and abstract and different. Thank you. And thank you for being a patron. I very much appreciate it. For, yeah, as you welcome. know, as an indie artist, we need each other, you know. For sure. And I thought at the time, I still thought you were here. So this was like in January, I think. Hey, I'm all about supporting my friends. So I'm glad it worked yeah, out. Yeah. Let me show it to you real quick. I think you saw it the other day, but this. Yeah. There she blows. Yeah, this is just the one. I have yeah, one of them. Yeah, but I just yeah. found this black mat and everything. It looks good in the frame. That's yeah, good. and it adds so much. It makes it pop. It does. When you walk into my room there, it just adds a whole vibe. Well, thanks to you because you commissioned that. And of course, once I sent it to you and everything, I posted a picture of it and people went crazy about them. And then I got more commissions off of that. The people wanted Angel. I was like, oh, and there no two are alike. That's kind of my thing. Right. You know? And so, so that everybody has something that's of value because it's their special thing. But within the idea of the angels with the hellish background, I like to say, well, that's so cool. I think you had told me about that, but I didn't realize it brought in more for you. So I'm so glad that was. That yeah, that... grocery money. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to find you there on the Insta. But it reminded me, like you said, kind of the hellish background yeah. and the beauty of the angel. Just the last year, it's been hell yeah. for a lot of people. It yeah. just inspired me to kind of start this podcast thing. And a year ago, something popped up in my Facebook feed. It was a picture of me and this artist named Danny Goki. And he was... Yeah, no, Danny. Yeah. No, Danny? Yeah, he's really cool. And I got some friends on his camp. He was leading worship at this event called I Am Second. So I got to meet him, talk to him. And I was like, hey, man, I'm coming to Nashville. And I was like, we should connect. That was early March. And the picture showed up in my Facebook feed. And last year, I was like, I want to start my own little version of I Am Second. So I called it Connections, and it was just me talking to my musician friends and bringing them in, talking about, okay, so this guy might know this guy, and his sister's cousin might be the TM for so-and-so, so and, so. and then she might know this guy who is the production manager for them, and this guy's cousin and nephew. Small world, yeah, for sure. So I started all that, and then COVID hit and just like shut down and I was like this close to getting ready to go out on the road with Toby Mac last year and then everything just uh, shut down so I was it'll come back me. it'll come back I promise it is it's coming back some of my friends are going out on the road they're on the Toby Mac the hits deep tour right now my friend's out with Tracy Lawrence again and so I'm seeing things and I'm so excited so. good gotta have faith that it'll come back yeah for sure that was one thing I wanted to ask you about your faith. I was listening yeah. to the Josie podcast, but we had kind of talked a little bit about, she mentioned God Week and that. That was really cool to me. That podcast, just for the fact that I live here in Nashville and you were there and she was talking about her son that has autism. He's got all sorts of things, apraxia and he's on the spectrum. And yeah, Josie Severe is the sister, just to, for your listeners to know, is the sister of my best friend, Ellen Severe, and the Severe family is like a second family to me. So Josie is by proxy, like a sister to me, as are all of her siblings. Her story is so interesting because her son's diagnosis is a rare one. She agreed to be on the show and she was so honest and open and vulnerable. And it was great. Because of that interview, I actually got a call from a couple other moms whose kids have apraxia and wanting to reach out to Joe. And, and for those listening to Hey Human podcast is the name of the podcast. Josie's the best. I mean, a saint, really. That's a lot to take on. And she loves her children. And the other thing, too, that I think is so extraordinary is uh, the fact that she has the one child who does have these developmental issues. It doesn't take away from how much she loves her other child. A lot of times in families like that, it's very hard because the one child gets all the attention. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's quite the struggle, but she handles it with a lot of grace. 
It was really inspiring. It hit home for me because I have a cousin that is very severely autistic and he's not on the spectrum of being any sort of social. He likes to stay to himself. He can't be around any more than his parents. You can't touch him. He'll freak out. So I understood that and I respected that. Like you said, you have one child that has these needs, but you have your other child that you can't pull away from that. You got to love them equally. And I can understand that because I was in a relationship with somebody that was like that. Her son was functional, but her daughter still needed that love and care too. So I can totally relate to that story. I really appreciate it because she was saying that she helped patients recover after like throat surgeries and yeah. speech and things, which yeah. is so beautiful because that's kind of my story is helping people still with their vocals as far as singing and music. My goal with the studio, I call it Legacy Studios, is because when my time is gone on this earth, I want to be remembered for loving on people and making yeah. dreams come to life. That's a good goal. I'm I like to call it the coin of the realm, as they say. Can you tell me a little bit about your belief systems in the things of light and higher powers and all that? So my parents are mixed faith, but not practicing. When I was a small child, I started school in Cambridge, England. So I was five years old going to school. The school I went to, their protocol was first they would pray to the queen for her safety and well-being, and then they would pray to Jesus. I knew who the queen was, but I had not heard of this Jesus feller. So I came home, you know, five years old, five and a half. And I said, who's this Jesus guy? They really into him. My parents, being my parents, my dad's a scientist, mom's archaeologist, sat me down and they said, well, here are the major religions of the world. These are the minor religions of the world. This is the history of religion and spirituality and faith. Here are the practices of the world, the mythologies, the pantheon. They ran the gamut. They just like, here are the stories and all that stuff. And then they said, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but they said, we can't tell you who you are or what to believe. That's a journey you have to take for yourself. It will support you no matter what you choose, which is extraordinary on one hand, because my father being a scientist who he was raised in a, I wouldn't say an orthodox home, but certainly a more, more religious home that, that he, in you know, I think as he went into sciences, even though I think that there is a coupling between a spirituality and science. For him, it was science. The fact that he was able to say whatever you believe or want to believe in, or, you know, we support that. So true to their word, I was obsessed. I mean, here I am five and a half years old and I was obsessed with all this information. So I started studying even at that age. I mean, I went to churches, I went to temples, I studied Latin, I studied Hebrew. Both my parents spoke ancient Greek and modern Greek. So I learned some modern Greek. So I was like really diving into this world because they gave me the room and the space to figure it out for myself. I think it was a more healthy communion, I like to say. Nobody's making me believe something. Nobody's like, you have to believe this because I believe this. There was none of that. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but just for me, I think it was the perfect scenario. In college, I studied literature and world religion because the obsession never ended. And to this day, I mean, I love, I love hearing sermons. I like lectures. I like about theology. I'm, I think it's all incredibly fascinating. Bill Moyers study with, um, oh my gosh, help me, help me. He's a God, you know, he's like a legend in the mythology world. Joseph Campbell, his whole talk on mythology and all that, which, and, and ancient religions completely engrossed my brain. On this journey, long story, I realized for me that some of us call God. To me, it is an all-encompassing thing. Like I look at you and I see God. I look at me and I see God. To me, Yahweh, I am. I think there's a reason why the word here I am, I am here is all over the Bible, for example, because it's a reminder that the temple of God is within us. <laughs> so to answer that question, which is in a way an easy and yet complicated question, my spirituality is deep in that I feel connected to all things. I see the patterns. I see that what I do matters because even if I don't know that stranger a hundred blocks away or across the world, my actions affect them in some way or another. I see it when I'm driving. If I'm in a good space and a healthy, happy, like, you know, let someone in or whatever, and I'm not perfect at it, but I think that energy resonates out. To me, it's like a combination of all that stuff. And I recognize that the stories are as old as time. There's the major flood story, Noah's Ark. 
There's also the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is a made 2,000 years before Jesus ever set his little feet on the planet. There's this story of an ancient flood story. To me, that's an important reminder. And I like the idea that, you know, the universe is a closed system, right? The universe happened and nothing in the universe hasn't ever come in new, right? It's everything that exists has always existed. Mm -hmm. It's a closed system, even though the universe is expanding, you and I are made of the same stuff that existed millions of billions of years ago. I love that. That's so cool. And the fact that a little bit of me is in a little bit of you is in a little bit of, you know, the dog is so cool to me. That's so awesome. You're right, because I'm getting goosebumps. (laughs) You're right. And it's so cool that we're connecting 20,000 miles away. Like you said, everything that you do and things like that, your painting, your picture has inspired me to do this whole thing. And now we're talking. What we do and don't do creates a ripple effect. I absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe that. And science, whether you're a person who doesn't believe in anything bigger than themselves, which is fine. I have no problem with people who don't believe in something. It's it's not for me. And that's the, the one thing is I am contented in knowing who I am and what I believe. And I allow for a shift and a change for that to grow or morph. But I don't put that on anyone else. And, you know, I love it because my dad, as he gets older, we have these really deep philosophical conversations about the universe and physics and God and the possibilities. And like any true scientist, he doesn't have the answer for that. So he can't deny its existence, nor can he, he can't prove it either way. And that's a kind of a beautiful space to be in. And it's interesting because my mom is in science too. She's a science teacher for the education system back in Southern Indiana. And we've had similar talks and things. And I was raised in, well, to go back, I was adopted from India. Um, okay. The uh, Taj Mahal. Oh me. yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, one of my, my favorite things, just keeping my background present with me. Blended family, raised in a church called United Church of Christ, very open-minded thinking, similar background to yourself. I was raised in a church. I had to find out who I am and what my belief systems were as an individual and person. So I've had a very strong upbringing with all that. There's the Big Bang Theory over here. You've got the Bible. There's similar. And I don't see why they have to be mutually exclusive. That's the thing. It's the, and, and that's what I love about talking with my dad is like, even Stephen Hawking, one of our greatest physicist minds of all time, is like, I can explain it to here, but then who knows? Who knows what's possible? I get very uncomfortable with people on either side that say, this is how it is. And I know it to be true. Faith is a beautiful, important thing, but nobody knows for sure. That's okay too. It's such a personal experience. Oh, I remember when I first moved to Nashville, this was over a decade ago, people would say, oh, what church do you go to? You know, it was a form of sort of judgment. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow, that would have an interesting question. And I would always respond, oh, I go to all of them. <laughs> you know? And look, I have, hold on, where is he? Ganeshe my favorite Indian god up there. Where is he? There he is. Yeah. My faves. I honor many religions because I think they're worthy of honoring. And I do think they're all connected back to this closed system that we exist in. I believe that everything is all interconnected as well. And the other thing about that too, is I have to be able to look at, when I say I look at you and I see myself, I see me when I look at you. And I also have to, if I say that, then I have to be able to look at a quote unquote evil or horrible person and also see myself. That I recognize my capacity to be that person as much as I recognize their capacity to be me in a mm-hmm. whole other group of circumstances because so many things pour into who a person is for sure just like that painting the hell on one side and the angel over here it was bringing it together we have it all in us we do and that's what this whole thing that i wanted to start i was going to call it angels and airwaves and then i started researching it and that was already taken so for copyright and legality i added a word to the end so I'm calling it angels, airwaves, and frequencies just because. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Because my great grandmother, her husband, my grandfather had Alzheimer's. And ever since I can remember, he always had that. Every Sunday after church, I'd go with her to go visit him. It was an experience. I was a kid. I didn't understand what was going on, but he passed. I was 17 and she passed like seven years later okay. and I was 24 they came to like visit me 
I don't know if you think I'm crazy, but I don't. I believe in that wholeheartedly. So my grandfather was a really tall fella, six foot. He was born in early 1900s. Uh, my grandma was born in 1910, so they were part of the Great Depression. He wore the the suits, the the brimmed hat, glasses, kind of like our modern day hipsters. Yeah, so he yeah. came to me. He used to sit in this rocking chair and smoke a pipe and things. And he came to me in that rocking chair, and he's like, "You talk about people glowing." And I was scared. I was like, "And he's like, it's okay. I just want to let you know, I'm in a better place. I'm not hurting. I'm." thinking clear. I wanted to thank you for coming to visit me. Grandma kind of did the same thing. That's wild. He was able to tell me that in the afterlife. That painting reminded me of that situation. So I feel like they are my guardian angels protecting me. I love that. Looking down on me. The whole airwaves part is what we're doing now. Broadcasting this on YouTube and podcasts. The whole frequencies, you probably know as a musician that you've got your spectrum on things we can hear, roll off all that muddiness and all the stuff that doesn't belong, but we boost what does. So it's just like the positive vibes, encouraging stories and all the stuff that we've been through. And there's a ton of frequencies we're not hearing that we're still being affected by just because we can't hear them. Our brain is still registering them in some way or another as well. And I do believe in otherworldly things. The veil for me is quite thin. (laughs) I also, I believe in miracles. I believe I'm a complicated woman. I believe in science deeply, but I also believe in the ether world deeply. Well, that's very cool because I want to ask you about that too. Glad you brought that up. What miracles have you seen lately in your life? Like during the last whole thing? Well, I've got to say to me, everything in its own way. And the fact that we even exist. I held a human brain in my hand once. I interviewed a neuroscientist. He invited me to come see his research. So I was in the lab and I held a human brain in my hands. And then I held the spinal column with all the the wires, the neuro, the fibers that go off to everything. Yeah. And I held that and looking at that, it is impossible to not see it as a miracle because the fact that we exist is insane. It's insane for everything to go right. And of course, things go wrong and all that stuff. We have all sorts of ailments and physical limitations here and there, but it's crazy and that it matches other things in nature. The Fibonacci sequence to me, that's a miracle. That's insane. The fact that when the eye doctor looks into my eye and sees what looks like the the cosmos and it matches images that the Hubble spacecraft is sending back how do you not see that as miraculous? That's that whole thing about the closed system. I am the universe. But in a more specific term, I've died twice in this life and uh, come back. So that's miraculous in and of itself. I've had conversations that were deeply powerful, spiritual, that I would consider a miracle. So yeah, I definitely believe in it. That's powerful. Thanks for sharing that with me. Uh Like you said, when you held that brain in the spinal cord and like all the nerve endings, have you seen the picture of the human body where you've got your brain, the spinal column and all that, and then it relates to the tree? You've got your trunk. It's totally. That's the thing is everything looks like everything no else. Oh, hang on. My series going crazy. She's sure. wanting to look up a, a tree. <laughs> yeah. You've got your brain, our spinal column, and then everything that branches out to our arms, your legs, feet, and then it's so similar to a tree. And trees are the lungs of the planet. Yeah, right? and they're giving us life. They're we can't, we can't breathe without trees. I know, it's been mind-blowing and so it's so cool. Connected. And for me, nature is like my Zen place. I'm one with the spirit, water. Yeah. Being on the water just reminds me of Jesus walking on the water and fishing and I love staring at the ocean I could do that for hours me too where I'm at I'm in the city so I don't get a good view of the night sky but I go to visit my parents they live in the suburbs and they've got like an awesome view of that I love to do that just stargaze and just think about we're like a just little speck of sand compared to this entire spectrum of a universe I believe in reincarnation too me too so interesting. I've been told that I'm an old soul. I feel like I've probably been around for hundreds of years, millennia, whatever. I feel like I may have been a dog at one point or a pet. Really? Interesting. I have this thing everywhere I go, 
and it was just flat to me. I don't know. That, that's, that's about your energy that they can sense, you know, how like animals sense good and bad. Mm. Yeah. Have you been to India? Have you gotten to, have you been able to go and experience? I have not. A friend of mine that I met back in Indiana, uh, he and I had planned a trip, but when we were planning it, I ended up moving here. So it just kind of fell on the back burner. So I am working on that. Isn't it interesting that you were adopted into Indiana, Indiana, Indiana? Yes. I think that's so interesting. I don't know. I like seeing patterns and stuff. I have a sister that was adopted too, and she's three years younger, and she has a little girl that's 10, and her name is India. That's a beautiful name. I've not been to India either, but I love reading about it. And again, like if you could see my my desktop is two gods, Indian gods, and they are the twins. They're immortals. And so they're my screensaver. So I'm pretty sure I've I've probably had a handful of I'm it's weird. Like I grew up, I was obsessed with Greece and Egypt. And I all over my room where most kids have posters of dogs and kitties and then teenage heartthrobs and things I had the pyramids and like temples and like all this kind of that's weird right I mean granted my mom's an archaeologist so I suppose even before I really had concept of what she did for a living I was completely enthralled with these ancient cultures so I love it I've always wanted to visit Greece and oh it's cool it's so one cool. of my favorite artists Yanni yeah <laughs> he played at the Parthenon yeah. Uh, Let me tell you, when you go to the Parthenon and see it. So I lived there when I was a little girl with my mother, you know, with her work or whatever. But then this is, you know, I was like three being in Nashville where they have the replica of the Parthenon. And as an adult, I went back to Greece with a friend of mine and we spent a month going all over the place, Greece and Turkey and uh, Montenegro and all these places in Italy. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. When we were in Greece, we went to the Parthenon. It is unbelievable standing at the foot of that thing just the, sure. the, the sheer magnitude of it is mind-boggling it's it's extraordinary extraordinary my mom by the way when she came to visit me in nashville she went to see the parthenon and she said that they did an exceptional job of replication she's like it's spot on other than you know the one in greece has obviously been mm -hmm. weathered by time and war and all that kind of stuff but you got to go to Greece. It's it's so amazing. <laughs> it's really great. Yeah, like you said, you grew up in England. I've had this passion for going. I've been getting into these old Sherlock Holmes movies. And um, yeah. there's this series called Toast of London. I don't okay. know that. This guy named Matt Berry's created this series. And he's like yeah. a, a voiceover artist. And just okay. all these little crazy things that happened to him where he's doing the voiceovers and he's trying to do an acting career and he's horrible at it, but it's hilarious. Well, England is great. I've, I made a record there. I lived there uh, and started school there. I did not grow up there. I did come back with an accent, but I did not grow up there. Pastoral England is gorgeous. London is vibey and fun. It's great. And Scotland is insanely beautiful. I mean, you got to get out there. You got to go when COVID lifts and I want to so bad. And when I was going to SAE, one of our instructors, his name was Alan Shacklock. And he would tell us, I've earned multiple Grammys. I've done all the stuff. I've worked with the people with the I've worked with the Beatles. I've shaken hands with this guy and this guy. I've worked with Sting. So you can kind of get to that level, you'll address me as Sir. So I've always called him Sir still to this day. But he was from England. Um I believe Liverpool, I think. Yeah is where he was from. So that was pretty cool just to have someone from there teaching me all this cool stuff, all those stories. It's great for people that are lucky enough to travel. And I know that's not a thing that everyone gets to do. I feel like extraordinarily lucky that I grew up in a family that their sense of the world of exploration was a big part of their experience and therefore my experience. But not everybody gets to do that. For sure. I had a lot of that growing up as a kid, a lot of travel throughout the country mm -hmm. in the States, but then we got to go to Canada. That was about all I got to do as far as international, but that was so cool. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about the record that you made there. Uh, okay. Well, my third record, which is called Surfacing to Breathe, I made that in New York. I spent a month in New York and I spent a month in London recording and it was great. It was a blast doing it. And 
Peter Gabriel's band played on the record. So Tony Levin and Jerry oh. Murata. And we saved space for Peter to sing, but the scheduling didn't work, which is such a bummer because, man, that would have been on one of the songs we wanted him on. And it's just we were ships passing in the night. But um, so that was, that was a fun experience. I've made four records. The last one I made was in Nashville with the incomparable Jim Kimball at Hot Closet. He's fantastic. And that album is called All I Ever Wanted Was Everything. And that's the album where Reba cut a song from it. Okay. So is that what I saw in your uh, discography on the website? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, I have a ton. I try to, I try and be good about putting all my discography up there and time I get a cut or whatever. So yeah, I try. But yeah, she cut that in 2014, so, which okay. was huge. I sobbed, cried. Oh my God. It was great. She's a legend, she's an icon. All that music that's on there is that, do you have parts on it? Are you singing on there or did you like- On, on my record or on Reba? Like all your discography on your website. So I have four of my records on my website where you can check them out. And then I have all the songs that I've written for other people are also under the discography and the various genres and songs, yeah. Got you, so that's stuff that you've actually written. So cool. Tell me about Brennan Hunt. Uh, what about him? have you got to like work with him meet him oh yeah he's a great friend of mine yeah he's fantastic really? oh so yeah, yeah cool yeah, yeah. i have not met him but i was researching uh some microphones and there's a brand called slate and stephen slate lives out there in la and he's created this huge company called slate digital and they've got plug-in suites and a microphone yeah. set and i was just learning how to use these mics well brennan hunt was doing a session here in nashville at the sound emporium with an engineer named Jeff Giuliano and I got to well watch that session there and I got to meet okay. Jeff a bit later on through some AES stuff music networking events yeah if you uh, want I can introduce you to Brendan you can interview him he'd be great because he has a deep faith and uh and he's a fantastic guy I'm just a love bug his whole family is amazing yeah Kelly is his wife and they have their two kids Lennon and Henley named okay. after obviously Don Henley and John Lennon. But yeah, I can connect you two if you'd like. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd be so he's amazing. A really, he's a lovely, lovely, lovely guy. I adore, I adore Brennan. And we've written together a good handful of times. And yeah, I mean, he's, he's a kindred spirit. That would be so amazing. Well, here we are, connections, putting things together. That's so yeah. cool. Look, I believe in the village. I'm so of that mentality. I come to the table and look at the table and say there's plenty of food here for everyone and i do not come to the table starving and thinking there will not be enough i kind of wanted to talk about your hey human podcast a little bit yeah look how, up hey human <laughs> yeah how did you come up with that when i was reading about it you said it was born out of two heartbreaks or something no like tragedies it was tragedies. Shooting. it was shootings so it was uh two of america's shooting issues and uh so one was the pulse shooting and the other was here in california san bernardino shooting and i it just wrecked me and sent me into a spin of i don't understand why humans can't see how connected we are and i was on the phone with my dad and he was like look for the good in people and then i had this really intense i would say miraculous experience in the kroger you know i was sobbing in my car and i collected myself and i went into kroger thinking humans freaking suck. Why are we so awful to each other? I'm even getting shivers now. My experience in the next 45 minutes in that grocery store was, was like God winks. It was like a reminder. No, no, no. The reality is this. That's not the reality. That's a one-off or a two-off. I mean, granted, gun, guns being used to kill masses amounts of people. It's a, a, a tale as old as time between war and revenge and you know, mental illness and all that kind of stuff. But in that moment, in this grocery store, I was reminded of how beautiful and connected we are. And so I went home and I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out how to remind people and myself that about this, about hope and about connection and about listening and about making space even to the conversations that we don't want to hear. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is the, if you don't touch the problem, if you put it in the closet where all the monsters live, 
you'll never solve the problem. So that's, that's what it was born of. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I talk to all sorts of people, people I don't agree with, people I do agree with, people who fascinate me, people who are on the verge of breakdowns, people that are on the verge of discoveries. It's incredible. That was so cool. And I listened to some of them and I, I really dig them a lot. And Thanks. I think you've got over 250 now. Is that? Three, you know, 320, 350. Yeah. Something like that. Thousand listening people, which is good. Probably That's not all at once. That would be incredible. But, and then, you know, it's, I've been doing it for five years and it's slowly eking up the, the iTunes list of popularity. I get every week I get a rundown of which countries it's trending in. And right. I'm always amazed like when it's in the top 10 in Afghanistan or, or in India, or Taiwan. And I'm just like, really? That's so cool. You know, or Brazil, it was really in the top in Brazil for a while. I think the, the recent one I got in America, it said something like 256 or 246 or something like that. That's just a big deal. There's literally 650,000 podcasts that made me pretty happy and I it's ad free I don't so nobody has to suffer through ads yeah. awesome that's congratulations that's so Thanks. great I'd and love I, to turn it into a tv show that that's the ultimate dream with my youtube thing I just started it last fall I've started to get kind of an international following too like a lot of folks from India Indonesia the Philippines yeah like Germany the UK yeah and, it's great, right? It's so yeah. weird to think that you're being listened. I had a, a class here in LA. I, I, I'm in, I did the conservatory for Second City and I was in an improv class. This guy, he kept looking at me and I was like, what is he doing? Like, I don't know. It was a weird. He was like looking at me like really intently and then he'd sort of look away. And then we all went to lunch and we were going around the group saying, you know, what we do besides that. And when I said, you know, I have this show called Hey Human, he's like, I knew that was you. I knew it. He's like, I've been listening to your show. And blah, blah. I was like, oh, it was such a cool moment. I'm like, here's this person who was actually only in town for this particular class, who lived in another state, which I know that's not in that country, but still it was so cool. That is awesome. We've been going to this thing out in Franklin. They have this thing called Cars and Coffees on the first Saturday of the month. So we've just been going out and meeting people. A friend of mine, he's a car enthusiast. Yeah. Just started talking to people and he's like, hey, tell me about your car. And then do you care if I put this on my YouTube? They're like, no, cool. You're going to feature me on there. And then the next time we went back, they're looking for us. And, hey, dude, I saw your footage of me in my car on your channel. That's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. And I think every time we collaborate with other folks that are doing what we do, it's going to spread it out that much more as well. I wanted to ask you about your TED Talk here in Nashville. Has that happened yet or is that coming up? Coming up in the spring. Okay. How did you get asked? To yeah, do they, they reached out to me and they said, hey, we're digging what you do with the Hey Human and would you be interested in doing a TED Talk? And I said, sure. And then as we chatted more, they kind of zoned in on the, the KKK episode because I interviewed the Grand Dragon, uh, Richard Nichols. They wanted me to talk about that. It's been interesting too, because it's a tricky subject, right? It can be a dangerous subject. I'm in the process of writing it and I'm trying to do it stream of consciousness right now, just writing what I feel about the whole thing and then I'll hone it down from there. But yeah, it's a super cool honor. I mean, it certainly was on a bucket list to be able to do a TED talk. That's neat. You know, yeah. <laughs> I love TED talks. I've watched a billion of them. So, well, that's yeah. so cool. I'm excited for you. I have to definitely keep my yeah. eyes on that. I'll let everybody know. That was pretty much most of it. But other than the you know, last year has been like the world just shut down. I know you're doing music or your podcast. I just sold How? my first screenplay. That was exciting. What? I just sold my first screenplay what yeah congrats thanks it's a short film it's about baseball and alzheimer's of all things i'm from a town called evansville in indiana i know evansville very well yeah. do you i do yeah H how's that between friends and visiting people at college there also a great bicycle town because it's flat and you can go for miles <laughs> yes and there's a park called westman park i used to bike around that trail a lot mm -hmm. Well, that is. I, yeah, Bloomington, Indiana is my favorite city in Indiana, however. No offense. 
<laughs> that's my favorite city. <laughs> it's very artsy yeah. and cool. It's got it's, a cool museum and I love it. It's a beautiful city. The whole IU uh, campus is a city. Yeah. And right around that area is Brown County. We used to go up there all the time as kids. It's such a beautiful fall. It's a, just a different, yeah. relaxed yeah. vibe. Like you say, creative, artsy. Yeah. It's funny, you know, we talk about world travel, which is fantastic. But I got to say, I've driven across the United States seven or eight times now by myself. And it's awesome. If this country is phenomenal. There's something for everyone. I mean, you could be at a lake. You could be at a river. You can be in the mountains. You can have snow. You can have a desert. It could be a freaking 130 degrees. It could be below 30. You know, it's all different kinds of foliage. We got the rainforest. I mean, sometimes all that happens in one freaking state, right? I mean, if I grew up in Washington state. It's all happening in that state. Driving across the country, first of all, liberating experience, beautiful experience. Having all that time with yourself is incredible. If you have a dog to go even better, I've done it with dog too, but he passed away. So the last couple of times I did it by myself, but it's really something to drive through. And I'm not talking just like stick to the, to the highways. I'm talking like get off and like drive around towns and it's cool, man. Sit at a diner and talk to, you know, this dude or that chick and oh, it's the best. Our grandfather took my, my mom, her siblings all around the country and the world um, when yeah. they were kids. So my mom brought that into our lives. Yeah. We, went, we went to LA in 95 when the whole OJ thing was happening. It was crazy. But my dad's company had a, a sponsor. One of his clients brought us out there. Uh, he does construction. So they're doing this diamond saw blade convention. We went all over. I and, love that. A saw blade convention. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> of all things. But we got to go to the La Brea tar pits. We got to see the Joshua trees. Then we got to go throughout LA. I've always wanted to visit, oh gosh, what's the big studio there with Circle Capital, I think? Capital, Capital yeah. Records. Yeah. I would love to go there and get a tour of that. And one of my favorite mix engineers, his name's Chris Lord Algae, he has a spot in Tarzana. A California lot. is awesome. It gets people make fun of it and all that, but it's it's great. It's gorgeous. And Northern California might as well be its own. I don't understand how they're in the same state, Northern and Southern California. I feel that way about Eastern and Western Washington too, though. It's a completely yeah. different world. But Idaho, my God, Idaho is gorgeous. The lakes and the trees. And it's, man, we live in a beautiful country. It's, it's hurting in a lot of ways, obviously, economically, the poverty of its people. It's, that's a big deal. As far as the landscape is concerned, it's just stunning. And that's what this whole thing is about for me is the world is hurting. We've been through so much last year and you've inspired me to start this. If I can give a little bit of encouragement to somebody else, then, yeah. hey, my heart is happy with that. This and is the ripple effect. Oops. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is like the fact that you say that this inspired, I, it's freaking awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited right now. It's, it's okay. exciting. It's wonderful. And who knows? Who knows who's listening to us? The cranks will start going around in their brain. It's exponential is what I'm trying to say. The beautiful thing about love and hope and faith and joy and all those things is that it is limitless. It is an exponential, unquantitative. It's just like it goes on and on. And I've seen it in action. I've seen people be mean to like the checkout clerk and the checkout clerk looks upset. And then you're like, okay, that person's going to have a terrible day. And then you step in and you say, hi, and you're happy and you're smiley. And you're like, oh my God, I love your hair or, you know, whatever, or that's a cool shirt. <clears throat> and maybe, you know, nowadays this is easier for women to do than men. I don't know. But if you're sincere, I think people can feel it is that if I think something in my head, wow, you have beautiful eyes or a lovely smile, or you just have a good vibe or whatever, I try to say it because most of us go through our daily lives, not hearing a single compliment. And not only that, we beat ourselves up during the course of the day, a crazy amount. I've seen it in action where your kindness becomes kindness that they have towards someone else, the next person in line or whatever. It's we're all connected. It's so connected. You're right. It's just amazing how something so little can amount to something so it's, much. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. A kind word can go so far. Kind of another connection between you in LA and me over here in Nashville. My dad played saxophone and I took after yeah. him and then I started playing drums. I had to get a retainer and you can't really play sax. And as a kid, I just started banging around on things. Following saxophone, 
came across a musician named Kenny G who lives out in LA. Yeah. And my friend Bobby was Kenny G's drum tech and still doing some stuff for him. Bobby's touring the world with Kenny G and all these other artists. And then a year ago, everything just, it's done. And I'm like, how are you going from the pinnacle of this touring career to like, oh my gosh. And we just started talking about that, but me bringing him in and checking in just to make sure my pal is okay. just like lit him up and it was good for me and it was good for him. I hadn't seen him in like two years, but just that little bit of time to reconnect made the world a difference and just made my whole week. So I'm ecstatic and I'm glowing and I'm so happy. <laughs> and you can do it for yourself too. I went for a walk yesterday and I didn't have my phone out and I walked and I passed by this purple flower. I was like, that looks like it smells really good. And I leaned in and I smelled it. I was like, oh, it was like honey and, and happiness mixed together. It smelled so good. And I was like, what if I had been looking at my phone, I would have walked right past that flower and not stopped and sniffed it. And that freaking moment just made my entire day. We miss out on so much. I said this on some other podcast the other day about how one time I watched these two people, I was sitting there just, you know, whatever, watching people go by and this young guy and this young girl were walking toward each other from opposite directions. And I thought they were both like this and they walked past each other and never even saw the other. And I thought, what if that was their moment? What if that was, what if that was like their person and they didn't even freaking look up, smile or just like mm -hmm. nod or anything and it's gone forever oh so, last year really hit me hard we're talking about blessings earlier thankfully for me my entire family has been kept healthy and safe the yeah, family business good. is going on no one's been out of work i've had Thank a lot of, yeah. yeah friends connected friends affected by covid and seen a lot of people lose their loved ones with my issues of bronchitis, I've kind of become a hermit. <laughs> Isolation is necessary, but it's not good for my soul. And I decided I'm going to start getting out. I'm going to start living life. I started doing all this stuff, connecting with people. And I'm starting another series this summer. It's going to be really cool. I'm going to Nashville studios and showing those. And, and I think I mentioned to you, Radnor Lake, I'm going to start going out there. I'm getting a drone, so I'm going to get some footage ah, of that. Like you said, just the vitamin D, natural sunlight, it's good for the soul and all that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This past year, people have reevaluated who they are and what's important to them, who's important to them. It's been a great way to get rid of toxic relationships that kind of it fall has. by the wayside that you don't have to pick back up if you don't want to. It's a uh, interesting time this reset button so hopefully you've been able to keep leveled out throughout this whole thing and not uh, not all the time I mean I dipped low a handful of times uh, it's hard not to really but in those moments know that tomorrow is another day and I keep my eye toward that it's that combination of be here now which I try to do but also know that this too shall pass this too shall pass and I try to talk to my whatevers I mean you know when I'm in those moments you can call it prayer, you call it internal conversation, call it whatever you want. It brings me guidance and a lot more peace by having that too. The voices yeah. in your head. <laughs> yeah, I've really found out over the last 12 months who's in my circle and who's on my team. I found those good friends and one of them's inspired me to start doing film and things and it's good. been really fun. And another one's hoping to do the YouTube stuff, starting to reach out to more folks in the music. And it's so cool that you might be able to get me connected to Brennan and all that. Yeah, but no brainer. Sure. Of course. Absolutely. He's busy, but I have a feeling if I, you know, because he trusts me and loves me and you know how that is. And you have your friends that you're like, Hey, this person's cool. And they're like, okay, cool. This yeah. is another one of those things. My friend Bobby, the Kenny G's drum tech, he reached out to this guy that's like a hit songwriter here. I can't remember his name. Craig something. I'll have to look him up. Craig Wiseman? Probably. One of the greats. Hey, I just had a meeting with my friend Polly and we did a little interview thing. Paul is trying to do this positive and encouraging thing. Yeah. You guys be a good connection. And the next thing I know, he's texting me. He's like, hey, man, let's go grab coffee and let's connect and talk about stuff. And just, he's a deep, he's a spiritual guy. He's a deep dude. When the flood hit in 2010, he and his wife, they 
organize a ton of people and resource and everybody got in cars and went and delivered water and food and he was the first one to like jump up and and do that kind of stuff so yeah he's a good he's a good egg very cool i'll still back yeah. in evansville at the time but a friend of mine uh, his name is jeremy he somehow got connected and he's like let's go help us from the flood relief so we came down and we were up by the Opry land area, um, Gaylord, we were doing cleanup of just like the wood and debris and just the smell, but we got to meet Brandon Heath of all people, a CCM mm -hmm. artist. So that was just really cool. It was just a great feeling spending our weekend helping others in need at that point in time. So it makes all the difference. Look, I truly believe if you're in a shitty mood and you need to be uplifted, go do something for someone. Like it takes you out of yourself. You may be hating the first 10 minutes of it, but then you forget to be in that mindset because again, that joy begets joy and helping your fellow human being, it does something. It does something to you. It just changes your vibe. It sure does. And you said joy. So there's a, I don't know what you call it, like acronym or whatever, but Jesus, others, and you. So I've been in my down moments when things aren't going the way of my human plan. I'm like, all right, baby, Jesus. <laughs> I'm praying for this person, this person, this person, this person. When I take the focus off of me, then that's when I'm starting to see things unfold. I've been trying to break into this whole music industry thing for like six years. I finally got my studio going in this yeah. year. Oh. Ten year town. <laughs> they say ten year. like a five year town or ten. Year. ten. <laughs> yeah. And we're finally getting to that point. I was looking through my my address book the other day and I realized I have been so blessed during my time here. And I'm sure you probably were too. And now being out in LA, you've got so many connections. A friend of mine is drummer for a band called for King and Country. I've got a friend of mine that's front of house for Tracy Lawrence. I got to do a one-off with him. I got to do stuff with all these different artists and do this stuff and breaking in. And I'm like, I don't think that a lot of folks are getting to do that. Not trying to brag or saying that I'm fortunate. I'm just saying that I've been blessed and yeah. I got to hang out with Lady A and Casey Musgraves and Kip Moore on a tour and they came through Evansville. And when I first moved here, I got to meet the drummer for Casting Crowns and got to hang out with them and have dinner with them in the green room. And so it's just been a yeah. blessing to have all these connections. And so just being able to reach out and do all this cool stuff, it's starting to finally yeah. come together. Success is whatever you make of it. So if you keep moving the goalposts, then you may never feel successful. If you acknowledge and can spend a little time in every accomplishment, it does a good thing. It's hard for people that are type A, like myself, where it, it is easy to move the goalposts all the time. Like, got this, now what's next? But it robs you of having those moments of feeling good and success. We make life a lot harder than it has to be probably. Now, and then again, that's an ethereal kind of way of speaking. Obviously, if you're hungry or you don't have a roof for your head or you've got cancer, that's some crap that sucks. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about like being willing to acknowledge the things you have that are good. That's important. No, um, I totally agree. <laughs> and like you said, we've got a roof over our heads. It's been a struggle, but we've made it. I'm here. That's what this whole thing's about. Talking about it is about a struggle. Yeah. Getting Life through all that, struggle. reaching out. That's why I wanted to support you and all that stuff. And it's it goes both ways. I kind of just wanted to, I could go on all day and talking. This is so natural. I love it. Just kind of wanted to wrap up and with yeah. an awesome conversation. But what would you maybe say to somebody that's struggling? Like you said, you said there's people out there with cancer. There's people that are not sure how they're going to pay the bills. Is the stimulus going to come? Did it go to the wrong address that happened to me? And but like, what encouragement would you give to someone that's not sure what's yeah, next? Firstly, I know it's hard. And secondly, I think all I can speak for is myself. I think part of the problem is we try and and decide what other people are feeling or going through. And that's an impossible task. I can empathize with you, but I'll, I'll never truly understand what you're going through because that's your experience. But for me, I try to remember that tomorrow is coming. I ask myself what I can do the best of my ability in the moment. And it may not even be much. It might be just getting out of bed. And that's okay too. I think there's a lot of pressure, perfection pressure, and that's impossible. And also if you're perfect, you might as well just drop dead right there because what else is there, right? You got no more else to learn. Well, I don't know. It's a tricky thing. Hang in there. Even that seems 
ridiculous to say to someone that's hungry, don't be afraid to ask for help if you can. I know that the pride and ego are, are complicated monsters, but you know, people love you. One thing for sure I know is that there is at very least one person in the world who thinks about you every single day. There's at least one and likely dozens. And that's hard to remember because this is a world of nearly 8 billion people. And yet it's so lonely, but keep that in your heart and that you are connected to everyone. Don't give up because we need you. Honestly, that's the biggest thing. We need you. You're important. You have no idea. I'm talking this now, the royal you of whoever's listening. Like you have no idea what your just existence means for someone else. And it may be you smiled at someone walking by you as you went down the street, or you just even acknowledged them. And maybe they felt like they've never been acknowledged. And that one thing has changed the course of, of everyone. We just don't know. We don't know how we're affecting the world. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that you are needed on this planet, that there is a purpose to you. On some days it feels like there couldn't possibly. That's just your ego telling you lies and it loves to lie to us. Hang in there. That's my best advice. As long-winded as I'll get out, but there you go. <laughs> That's okay. You've kind of got me welling up here a little bit <laughs> and throat. It's a tough planet. It is. It's a tough planet and it's easy to feel alone and it's easy to feel like giving up. I, I know because I've been there. That was a perfect answer because it reached my heart for sure. And I'm sure someone else could use it too. And I just found that being stuck in my apartment for months, days at a time, I mean, from March until June, the only time I would leave is to take the trash out. <laughs> and then in June, I started going back to the studio. I've been getting connected. I FaceTime with my parents. Like you said, there's that one person. And for me, that person is my niece. She wants to know what Uncle Paul is up to. My mom's let me do the, the Facebook kids stuff with her. So we get to do that and chat and all that. She's like, what's Uncle Paul doing? Hey, you're going to get to come home from Christmas. Yeah, I'm going to be there. And she's like, hey, can you come home for Easter? And I'm like, well, Aww, I love that. Just the innocence of kids looking up to someone and here I am I don't think I'm anything special but to her I'm like the whole world because I'm not there she wants to know what Uncle Paul is doing yeah but see that's the thing we are special we are special we are unique our singular experience is different than every other person on the planet even though we have so much in common as like human common and wants and desires and needs oxygen and food and water and love and touch all those things are universal but we're still, we're special. We are, you are a miracle. That is an undeniable truth. Whether you believe in science or God, that is an undeniable truth. Just the very fact that you exist is amazing. It's incredible. Oh, man, this conversation is so deep. I love it. <laughs> I forgot to ask you this earlier because we were talking about this now. It just reminded me that how do you come up with these topics and conversations for the Hey Human podcast? It's all organic. I don't plan ahead at all. I don't even write out a list of questions. I just start talking because humans are fascinating and it will go just as this conversation has gone. It will go where it goes. And I believe that there is magic in that, you know, there is something for everyone. Someone out there is going to hear something that we've talked about today and be like, holy crap, that totally resonates. Mm -hmm. There's going to be one person. It's that same thing. It's like you matter because someone else thinks you matter. And eventually we'll catch up and think we matter ourselves. That's it. That's like, that's our journey in life. I think we're put on this earth to love. It's very gooey, touchy feely. It's not just loving others, it's loving ourselves. Everything starts with us. It's like we forget. We're born these little babies who then immediately get piled on with all sorts of crap from our parents and our the socializing and the television and the friends and the jobs and the this and the that. And it's like we forget. That little baby is just like, oh, love. And it forgets. Forget about starting here and letting that radiate outward. Well, it's a lot. It's a lot to be a human being. I, I'm not going to lie. Wednesday, I sat down for like half an hour. I'm trying to do Zoom 
just making sure it wasn't going to lose connection. And then when it did, I was like, oh my gosh, I told my friend Tiffany about this because we're going to do one too. I'm so nervous. And she's like, why? I said, because funny enough, I haven't met her, but like, I look up to her. You're doing all this incredible stuff. I've listened to these podcasts and it inspires me and I want to be on point with that. Well, you're doing great. This is great. This is a blast. And you know what? Technical difficulties can be fixed. And most people are pretty cool about it. Most people will be like, oh, not a problem. I mean, I've done them and had things go haywire. And, you know, just like, hold on. (laughs) Technical (laughs) difficulties. It happens. Life isn't perfect. Well, cool. Uh, Thank you so much for understanding. And I had this whole thing. I tried to have it rehearsed. Maybe that's why I'm so nervous. I'm putting too much on it. Like I had a lot of pressure ideas on things all happen so this has been really cool yeah and so we, we tried to do this a couple days ago and it went cotty wumpus but you know what there's always the restart button always who cares technical difficulties you know you were also trying to do it from a concrete box you know your studio studios are notorious for having terrible internet yeah it was and this is funny too because my friend kevin asked me if i wanted to come in and sit on a vocal session for this group called family force five and i was like yeah man and as it would have it my allergies flared up that day and i'm taking allergy medicine and flow days and all this so i'm gonna sit in the back corner my eyes are all bloodshot i'm looking like i'm high <laughs> and the singer's looking at me like this dude okay and we were getting ready to go to dinner after the session was over i said hey jacob you know man i'm sorry if I was zonked out. I didn't want you thinking I was like freaked out or you know, I was like, my allergies been going bad. He's like, oh, it's all good. I have allergies too. He's like, every morning I have to two pumps, flow nays. I'm like, dude, me too. <laughs> and I was so like putting all this pressure on myself and we connected and bonded over this conversation over flow nays and now we're great friends. <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, the monsters we create in our brain pans can be overwhelming. Thank you for having me on the show. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to get like all this put together and edited and kind of get yeah. all my thoughts put together. Anytime I'm being stupid, you just cut that right out. <laughs> well, same here. I get excited and nervous and I stumble. And like when I'm doing stuff for my YouTube thing, I have a script and I try to get through it. And I try to memorize it and then I have to go through so much on these edits, but you know. You know what though? Imperfections are perfect. That's what makes us hey human right that's right that's right i think we did pretty good I did too. it was a lot of fun if you're coming to nashville or anything let me know hey, we absolutely can... and i'll um i'll get a hold of brendan and, and get you guys connected so so awesome well thank you so much my plan is i came up with this minute and 30 second trailer i'm gonna put it out on my youtube page all the stuff that's happened like uh, the industry shutting down it has some health stuff travel restricted and then I come in and just start talking about it. So that's going to be my trailer. And then I was going to do my story talking about how I was adopted from Mumbai and all that. And then I was just going to start bringing all these people in and just kind of go through it. And then I just figure, hey, if I can make somebody else smile, whether... Do it. Just do it. What have you got to lose? And like you said in our chat, just just go for it. Go for it. But I thank you for your time. And it's so good yeah. to keep up with digitally and... We'll uh, have to keep it. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Yeah, Yeah. totally. I really appreciate it. And thanks for listening for all the people listening to or watching. I guess this is a visual one. So yeah, I'm going to do it both. I'm going to turn things from the actual footage, kind of turn it into a podcast too. So it's going to be out there in those airwaves. (laughs) Uh, Perfect. All right. Well, have a wonderful day and thank you. Yeah, you too. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks so much again. All All right. Bye. Bye.